Uh, welcome back. It's still the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We'll be taking our first uh, conversation for the day, and Kaduna is, you know, has taken front burner in the past few days. Now, terrorists have attacked Gidan train station along the Abuja Kaduna rail track. Uh, sources say the terrorists may have planted IEDs on the tracks, forcing the train heading to Abuja from Kaduna to a stop. Now, this is a second attack within 24 hours along the same axis. At least seven persons uh, feared killed when terrorists attacked that train on Monday at Dutsi Village. Now, the Monday incident happened around 7.45 p.m. at Dutsi Village in Chikun local government area, just a few kilometers from the Rigasa train station, which is the last transit point of the train. Meanwhile, President Mohammed Buhari has met with service chiefs and heads of security agencies following the terror attack on the Abuja Kaduna train that left many dead and several injured. Now, following the briefs, Buhari directed the immediate conclusion of all the processes for the implementation of the integrated security surveillance and monitoring solution. Joining us now to discuss the situation in Kaduna State is a security expert. Uh, he is uh, Ambassador Roy Oamian Ohidiave. Many thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yes, it is indeed a pleasure. Uh, Roy, let me just start it by asking really, you know, in our pre-chat we're talking about how Cardona State is a state that has a whole lot of uh, military presence. Uh, we have, uh, you know, they have the school there in Jaji. We have a lot of military installation in uh, Kaduna State, but all of a sudden it seemed to be like a hotbed for a lot of um, attacks in recent days, or well, not just recent days. Uh, last year we are aware of uh, the train incident that happened. One would have thought that with all of um, this concern uh, with the attack that happened over the weekend, uh, another one on Monday, surprisingly we saw yet another attack just yesterday. Roy, where are we really headed? What are these bandits? What are these terrorists trying to say to the government and the people of Nigeria? Well, um, I think um, the whole country is mourning right now because um, if you actually look at the quality of life that we're lost, going by the broadcast that we have been seeing, the doctors, the lawyers, you know, these are prime Nigerians in their prime, productive and professional, well-trained, well-groomed to support the economy and the um, professional sector. You know, so it, it's painful. I, I, grew, I grew up, I can say I grew up in Kaduna because when I joined the army, I, Kaduna was my first posting. I served in one mechanized infantry division for nine years from 1990 to 1999. And in that nine years, uh, we, we were so blessed to have all those military installations, you know, so when there was no GSM phone, you know, so when something is happening, people start running, everybody just starts running. But um, the way the military formations are positioned, you can lock down the state. You know, from Zaria, you can shut down the road that leads out. From um, Sabun Tacha, you can shut down with the artillery barracks there. You know, so many military installations in um, the one mechanized infantry division was built at Kao. Kao leads to Mando. Mando leads to the airport, leads to outside of um, Kaduna. So all those are strategic um, positioning of um, military structures. You know, and when you look at the, the state itself, Kaduna is divided into mainly Christian zone, Muslim zone, because of all the prevalent riots, religious fracas, crisis, conflict. You know, so the Christians are separating, the Muslims are separating. Then there is the Banawa area where everybody, so many people can stay together. So one would be surprised if we have not come to reasoning that Kaduna would be a hotbed. A hotbed in the sense that um, any, any religious conflict in the country, Kaduna usually is one of the bloodbaths. It's usually one of the places that people are killed. So 
the government over the years, I'm talking about 30 years now, must have been blind, must have been um, comatose, not to have been building resilience and initiating presence in all those areas we now freely call unpoliced areas. You know, there are so many bush parks, there are so many forest areas, there are so many places where civilizations have not gone into. So people cluster in areas where there is a barrack, where there is a police formation, people gather around there and start to build civilization. We refuse to see all of this. Then when we started to know that, okay, it is possible for people to hide in such places. Some of us traveled out of this country. I did some drone um, training in San Jose in California and USA. We came back to Nigeria. We went to Canada again. We did some training with our money as a retired military, as a veteran. You know, and so many other people, security professionals, gave proposals to the government. And like some of us even refer you to the consultants, to the manufacturers of the product, to beat all the embroglio of um, government and processes, procurement procedures, because the timeline has time bad. So once something is time bad, that means the insecurity dynamic has overtaken the opportunity of that gadget, that strategy, that structure to be able to mitigate the insecurity. So you need to advance. So Kaduna itself is a base for military, police, and even the government. So many of our leaders in Nigeria today, they have their houses in Kaduna. So many of those in the National Assembly and big places so why have we restricted us from providing this solution? So, so, I mean, it brings us back to that question because uh, once upon a time, we remember when Chewusani raised the concern in the House about, you know, the Kaduna Abuja Road. And then he was countered by his colleague, a senator from, um, you know, Katsina, if I'm not mistaken, Ahmed Kaita, who said he was misleading the public. Now, 4.2 seven trillion naira in the past seven years has been spent on defense. Some people would make some arguments saying, oh, spending budget on uh, defense is not necessary. It doesn't cater for, you know, every other security architecture. Some people have also argued that, you know, the war that you have this terrorist fighting, uh, it's, a con it's not a conventional war, it's a guerrilla war. So where does the problem lie? Is it in the fact that we don't have the resources, we don't have the manpower, we're unwilling to fight this, or is the fact that we don't even understand what's going on? What exactly is going on? Why haven't we? Because it feels like you have these terrorists coming in bikes. I mean, for the um, incident, unfortunate incident that has happened in Kaduna in the, in the past few days, and the reports that we're getting is that mostly you find out that they're on bikes. And then they have the AK-47. So looking at the, uh, a full military, um, you know, architecture and having the police and everything intact, having this group of persons who you would think would have less or no equipment um, overwhelming the entire country. Well, um, it, it, it's funny, you know, <laughs> like you have narrated right now, you know, so, you, did you listen to the Minister of Transport, Rosimi Amechi? I don't know if you have that case. Maybe you play it sometime today. Uh, I listened. He mentioned, he mentioned that he has requested 3 billion naira or thereabouts to procure surveillance equipment for the rail line. And it has not been approved. You see, sometimes in Nigeria, we, we just take human life and throw it away. And the people that do that walk freely, talk carelessly on social media, on television, and walk away. And you see, it was like he was laughing or something. Look, you, you requested for surveillance equipment to secure a real technology that you, you and so many others are fronting and was able to secure government approval to, 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 to present and manufacture 
and bring in China and so many other people. Who gave you the approval to start running the rail line when the security procurement has not been approved? Who, who, who gave you the approval to run the rail line? If I am protesting a procurement for my country as a minister and it's way beyond three billion and it has not been approved, that means it is something viable to secure the risk parameters that are envisioned. Then every day we hear that the, the rail line, the train are being compromised. We hear. I use the train also. Then you are still not stop the train from moving until the government secures with the security projection that you have on the desk. Then who are those that have delayed it? So both the minister and those that have delayed it, what next? You see, during Abakiari case, I asked, how many IGs did he start under when he was going on air? Who is culpable? How many IGs will be culpable? Now we are looking at ministers and ministries and government officials that have refused to process, analyze, approve, and deploy a security surveillance system that will secure lives of Nigerians, innocent Nigerians. Now, who is going to be culpable? That is our side. Now, come down to this other area where you mentioned about the amount of money that have been released for security over the years. Let me ask a simple question. We heard that um, some soldiers uh, um, stole money from their organ, that stole money from his organ, which is the government, the military. And those soldiers ran away with the money. And the officer was brought before the government. And he was doing as if he's dead. Up till this moment, I don't know if that officer, if he is culpable, who else? where the supporting line in his culpability. Then you go back to NDDC, because we are talking about Kaduna today. All the Niger Delta area has no road, no rail, no airport, no facility. All the money into NDDC, we are fund through the NDDC, and the dividends and the, the benefits did not reach the people. Now, who is responsible? Your eyes and your mind will now move to the ESTC, the ICPC. All of those agencies are caught up in struggles of superiority. Is it this person that is the head of the agency? Who is going down? Who is coming up? Which politician are we supporting? Who are we bringing down? Even the president made a speech recently. Dr. Ryo Uhidave. Yeah. I, 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 want us, I, want, I want us to look at it in this light because th these are concerns that we have raised. I mean, Nigerians have actually raised. Uh, we have created the fact that, that, yes, we have created the fact that is it that we don't have the resources? Uh, that's on the one hand. Is it that we don't, um, uh, you know, it's, it's an issue of having the willpower, the political, um, or, or let's not say political, but just the willpower, you know, to tackle these uh, bandits, terrorists, whatever name we have tagged them. And on the other hand, is it that we don't understand the, um, the situation that we're faced with and so we're not employing the right uh, tactics or you know, the, the, the knowledge, we don't understand. Because I if we look at it, we would understand that uh, you know, it's not a conventional war that we're faced with at the time. It's a guerrilla war, and so you have uh, the sabotage, you know, the uh, ambush, and what have you. So, what exactly is the problem? Well, you see, the problem we have in Nigeria is that those that held the country together, there are people positioned to control the oil environment. Those are people that have personal oil blocks. There are people positioned to control the financial system. Those are people that have businesses that control the finance of the country. There are people that are positioned 
to deliberate and negotiate on international relationships. Those are people that are positioned in our embassy. Now, all of these set of people are giving you a rough blanket. I don't want to mention names. They are negotiating for comfort. So many of them need to cover up backlogs of cases of uh, mal mal malfunction government that they ran. These are people that are using the 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 unfortunate Nigerians that are poor poor education, poorly positioned to institute violence. We started with tribal cases. You will hear that the Shakiri and the Joe are fighting. You will hear that the Juku and the Thieves, they are fighting. You know, we went to religious matters. You will hear Christians and Muslims. All these are issues created to destabilize the government. And there are people that benefit from all of this. And we didn't know that gradually the armies that we were building will begin to have their own think tank. They will begin to reason in their own direction. They will begin to cut off from the control of the Godfatherism system. And right now, the hoodlums, the hooligans, the, the bandits that we call, the terrorists, they have a few days to have people to recruit from the destabilized Nigerians to fuel violence. So where do we go from there? The police that we are supposed to use, they are crying for better pay. They are threatening to go on strike. The military that we are supposed to use, you know, the military look at the veterans. If I'm going outside of the military, what comfort do I have? Now the veterans are crying every day. We are coming out for another protest very soon in this April because all the agreements we have shared. Now, if you look at the other agencies, the DSS, the ESCC, they are all controlled by testing in power that could help them for promotion or where we go. Remember that I said this, that it was a wrong example to make those chiefs of staff immediately become ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Now you make them ambassadors, they are still not answerable for all these millions and trillions of money that we have voted for security. Mm -hmm. Now the next set of the heads of security. They are looking for comfort. So whoever is in power that can give them comfort, they will be playing to the music of that setting, of that group. So we are in trouble. And I'm sure the, the, the God that we serve in Nigeria is the one to rescue us. All right, uh, we need God to rescue us, but then it is uh, the responsibility of um, you know government to ensure the safety of, of life and property. Mercy indeed asked the question as per body language, uh, the financial wherewithal, you know, to do all of that. I don't think those are really the issues because we know what to really do. Because for the president to have called the service chiefs and directed uh, immediate conclusion of all processes for the implementation of the integrated, I'm just quoting him, uh, security surveillance and monitoring solution for the Abuja to Kaduna Railway and by extension to the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. So over time, they were supposed to have done all this thing. They knew they needed to do all this thing. And now the Senate is asking and uh, Buhari to declare full-scale war against bandits who want military to bombard them, terrorist uh, enclave. My, my question right now is what next? Because it's as though these terrorists, uh, these uh, bandits have become so emboldened, the roads are not secure. The Kaduna Abuja Highway is not secure. Over the weekend, it was an, e an incident at the airport, not the train. So the average resident, what are we trying to tell them? How did they move about? What, what should they be saying to them? How do we allay their fears? Because right now, it's as though we're just asking them to just sit in their homes, you know, just to stay back because they cannot walk free. They cannot move free uh, either on the roads or the, the rail tracks or even by air. So where do we go from here, Roy? I, I have, I'm happy, um, Justin, you are, you are a veteran in the industry, and um, we have been speaking together for the past 15 years, if I'm not mistaken. Now, let's take that 15 years out of the chunk of like 40 years that we have started this dilapidation. Now, for the past 15 years, we have been giving advice to free. 
no consultancy fee, nothing. Now, a responsible government would have sat down and put papers, uh, pen to paper and picked out reasonable timelines and strategies. Now, where we need to go now, as I speak to you, is everybody needs to get their PDC. That's number one. Number two, everybody needs to believe in Nigeria. You see, it's not only the agency. The policeman, the bribe he collects, he's given by a Nigerian. You know, the military, the, the, the distraction they cause, they are giving money by civilians, by Nigerians. You know, Nigerians need to speak up. We need to obey as little as traffic lights do. We need to go back to all the necessary triangles that will give us peaceful cohesion, peaceful coexistence. Then the agencies of government, they need to also work very part too. Then the institutions of government. You know, it is a blanket situation that we need right now. You can't work on the police without the people themselves believing that they need a good police. You can't work on the people without the police believing that they must deploy excellent policing. You know, you can't work on the government if you don't vote in necessary diplomatic um, people to handle the diplomacy that we need now. Let me ask a question in your question. Where is the National Orientation Agent? Where are the people that work in the National Orientation Agent? In our BROC buses last time, we don't even have emergency numbers written. A girl was chatting with friends and family to secure her life. You know, in the train, there are no emergency numbers written. People we are going to tweet that I have been shot. I am I, I may not survive. You know, where are the orientations? Where are the um, the primary school, the secondary school, the boy scout, all these governors that are going to sit down somewhere and eat a car at a junction because of 2023. Can't they go to a primary school now and start a robust boy scout and girls guide? Can't they go to a secondary school and start an anti cult group and fund it with a not and um, facilitators, resource persons, mm. to be coming to the secondary school to talk to them. Can they go to university and look for students that are excellent, support them from 200 level, and help them to get scholarship abroad? Mm. These are things that you begin to touch the people to make them believe that the government is for the people and by the people. But where we are now, it's difficult to put the politicians' full view on the people. Their full view is on the wealth they, they, they will generate, so they are spending lasciviously. So it's unfortunate where we are, we need to look at the people. Anybody in government, I'm happy for an Anambra state right now. I pray that they don't derail because if they start, it will become a model. So the people of Nigeria have ideas, they have products. Who is investing in it? Where is that young man that did a drone that we were watching on TV? Where is the young man that did a transformer that we were watching? I, I have the videos. Where is the young man that did a helicopter? A car, a young man, who sponsored them? Where are these politicians now campaigning? Going to the market to eat Akara with Akara seller. Why can't you look for productive Nigerians and begin to support them? We must support productive Nigerians. We must support Nigerian businesses. We must support Nigerian manufacturers. We must support the Nigerian dream. We must believe in Nigeria. Every Nigerian must become patriotic. And we must stand together against bad governance. We must come together against disillusionment of ideas. We must support the dream, the goals, the aspirations, and the aspirations of Nigeria. So that tomorrow, we will look back and be happy. If not, our own days will be troubled. Okay, so um, just as we close this conversation down now, in tackling uh, the security concerns in Kaduna State and in Nigeria, 
we need to understand. First, we know that, uh, I mean, you, you have questioned and queried uh, some of the concerns that was raised by uh, the Minister for Transportation, Ruti Miyamichi, uh, talking about the surveillance cameras. Brilliant as that sounds, uh, the, another question would be, how does that solve the problem? We have seen situations where uh, you have the international organization, some international organization, uh, pointing out, including the US, I mean, pointing out and mentioning names of those who were sponsor of, uh, sponsors of uh, terror in Nigeria. Uh, even the government in itself, the federal government says, we know these people. And you also have state government saying, oh, yes, when they know that, uh, you know, these terrorists and these bandits, whatever tag we have given them, are collecting taxes in some state. We have, we have acknowledged all of these things, but what are we doing with the information? So one will begin to query how having a surveillance camera, we see that all the time with the, C, uh, the CCTV camera. It's okay to have it there, but do you have anyone manning it? It's okay to have it and understand. What do you do with the video if you know, it records everything? So, but that's on the one hand. On the other hand, the question is, do we even know these people? Who are these people? What are they fighting for? What are their costs? Who, who are they? It's another thing. Yes, we know there's been a lot of back and forth. We say they are bandits, and then there's an order to proscribe them as terrorists. Um, and so we're now saying they're terrorists. But do we really know these people? Hello, Dr. Roy, can you hear us? I can hear you, but you are just cracking a little. I can hear you. Okay, so uh, th the question here is, who we are these people? We are asking if we know these people. Yes. If we know these people, if we... Know we the agenda? Their name. Yeah. So over the years, there were names that were mentioned in Dubai. Before even Malami came on board. And you see, this our attorney general is just a, it's a strategic disappointment to Nigeria. Because the judiciary is one of the greatest weapons of any country. Look at America. Why do you think Donald Trump could not do the, 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 the defense he wanted to do? Because the, the judges will bring one thing up tomorrow, bring something else and is fighting with them. You know, the judiciary is something that could hold even the agencies because it keeps the constitution in the purview of everyone. Now, if you put somebody like uh, Malami as our um, attorney general in the country, what do you think are his pedigree? What are the things he has achieved so far? So far, he's even begging that comments he made, he made over Abakiari, we are not so. If you didn't make those comments and you find them in public space, who is culpable? So you cannot even deal with media that you say that misquoted you. How can you deal with people that they mention that are terrorists? Because whatever the ESCC is doing, ICPC, all of them will go through that Ministry of Justice that you see before they will begin to maybe get approval. Then you will not be hearing things about what party, who is that person. That is the Nigerian context. So I think that Malami, as an attorney general, is a strategic loss to Nigeria. If we have a good justice system and there is an apex controller in that seat and he cannot see clearly, so quickly educate and expressly perform penalties on cases. Because now, these people that were mentioned that are terrorists, what do you think they will be doing now? Because even their, their businesses have not been closed, their accounts have not been closed. So are we not encouraging others to say, because they will go to them and say, how are you compromising the government? And you will know who is compromising the government. And the sad thing about Nigeria is that when this strategic loss of a of an attorney general leaves the seat today, you will now see that nothing will be done. Nobody will ask reasonable questions. Nobody will ask for accountability. And there will be no penalties for malfunctioning that office. So every other office in Nigeria, they just run on their own pro bono. So we are in trouble if we can't put our justice system in place. If people mentioned as terrorists cannot begin to 
seen in handcuffs cannot begin to be seen facing court cases on television. Even the, the Abakari case, all the pictures that you see on TV, you will see him sitting down on the chair and a, on, a, on a media. Nigeria is compromised. We are compromised institutionally. We are compromised in our agencies. We are compromised in our people focus. So we have a big problem and we must start. Anywhere that we need to start, we must start. All right, um, um, Ambassador Ohidi, uh, don't you think uh, we need to still question the manner and approach that we have been going about um, this issue of um, insurgency or anti-banditry or anti-terrorism, you know, in Nigeria or in Kaduna State? Because over time, you know, when we hear talks of um, negotiating with uh, uh, these bandits, the terrorists, uh, giving them amnesty, don't you think that um, this has maybe, in a way, um, emboldened this? Um, there's some um, killers, there's criminals, uh, there's um, marauders who kill, um, you know, innocent um, Nigerians just um, anyhow without uh, even the slightest um, thought or second thought. Uh, don't you think we need to question uh, the way we have gone about it? Don't we, don't we need to revisit uh, you know, our approach to this um, um, counter-terrorism in Nigeria? You know, thank you very much for, for bringing us into that light because it's one of the problems we also have because some of the recycled terrorists, recycled bandits, they become jobless after your Lagas, um, re, re, uh, after your Lagas um, period of trying to change their ideology. You kick them out. So when you kick them out, <laughs> they, they, they get a bite and they go back into the bush, you know. So we have advice, we said, number one, when because of human rights, international human rights court, international human rights law, Nigeria is constrained not to maybe get into a place, start bombing it, or people submit themselves to say we have come to present ourselves, we have, we have um, reneged on banditry, terrorism. Nigeria is constrained to just not shoot at them like that. You know, so you need to take them in. But we advise, when you take such people in, why do you give them better living conditions than the IDP which they display? You see IDP camps. You hear stories every day how they struggle for food, for medical, for life, you know? And you look at the people that displace the Nigerians to become uh, internally displaced persons. You will see them, they will tell you they are restructuring their ideology, they are in fine dresses, they are eating balanced diet, you know, playing games at will. You know, so, so something is wrong there. You know, that's number one. Number two, we have mentioned, let me even say it on air, we have proposed that the government can actually put in molds within those that have submitted themselves and begin to get information from them, actionable intelligence, even while they are still there, and use those intelligence to go for the buses, to go for their supply routes. So many of them have been arrested. They say they are the ones that supply fuel. They are the ones that supply arms and ammunition. What information did they give to you? Did you action on them to protect Nigerians by blocking those supply routes, financial supply routes? These are the people they said are supplying um, finances. So what did you do? by putting listening devices within those places so that as they communicate, you begin to extract information and quell and destabilize the ones in the bush, in the forest area. What did you do when they were coming out to say, we are going to empower you, we give you phones, we give you anything we give you, which we may track, because I know they are not doing it, so I can say it here, and see how you can use that to follow them, because you already have their number, the NCC, the communication line, everything is for the government. So we can track them, know where they went to, 
follow up. Nobody follows up. After your tenure in the re- 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 radicalization camp, you just be released. Some of them come and apply. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a military officer. And you say they are Nigerian, they have repented. And you put them back. These are the most that are bringing down the agency today. Because once beaten twice shy, they are into it. They are into it once and for all. They have this internal sympathy for terrorism, for banditry. So we all are right. making a big mistake keeping those people to live better than IDP. We are making a big mistake. All right, thank you, Ambassador Roy. We don't track, we don't follow, we don't monitor where they are. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Roy. You know, this issue of um, um, security is actually a very, uh, you know, passionate one. We can just go on about it for, you know, the next couple of hours. But for time constraint, we must, uh, you know, end this uh, conversation at this. We must say a very big thank you to you joining us uh, today to uh, bring um, some much. solutions to all of these concerns in Kaduna State. We do appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. All right. I will just take a very quick break uh, in a moment. I will come back and talk about uh, what went on in Abuja yesterday, uh, the fallout of the Nigeria-Ghana clash uh, in a moment. Uh, we'll be right back. Just stay with us.